place. You've probably heard about this. Um, it's been around since at least 1995. It used to be the Shipwreck Terror Fest. Uh, four years ago, a new group of people came in and basically revamped the whole thing. So I'm wondering, do you think you've just been given like the biggest Halloween playground ever, the entire Queen Mary to work with? What was that like? Well, um, when we came into this um, several years ago, it's the absolute big thing that makes Dark Harbor so special is that everything takes place at the Queen Mary, the property and the ship itself, and there's so many rich history, and so much rich history and a lot of great stories that go along with it that we're able to work with that space and that palette and bring all of these stories to life in a different way through Dark Harbor. And so were there lessons from the past, maybe, of what had happened before and what you could do that was good and recreate versus what you could improve upon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we took over, we decided to uh, kind of give it a fresh slate, a fresh palette to start with, and um, we thought what hadn't been done that we really wanted to capture with Dark Harbor was to go back to the source, go back to the Queen Mary, to bring back those stories that are hidden in the corners that people might not know about. So we spent time on our team researching, reading stories. Um, Brian's with the attractions department on the ship, and his staff has been collecting um, encounters and ghost stories for years. So when we went, when I say we went back to the source, we went to Brian's team, and they handed us a huge stack that they have been collecting. And it was great fun for our group because we got to go through and read all of this. And then we went back to the source again, and we said we want to go experience some more paranormal activity. So we hired experts and guides and we spent some time in the dark holes of the ship and we had our own encounters that we can bring to life not only from the stories that we've been collecting throughout the years but from our own experiences. Okay, so Scary Mary is based on a real story? Absolutely. She's a little ghost girl you see Queen Mary and was it Hellfire or the Submerge? Submerge. Submerge. Which brings me to my, my next question. One of the great things about the Queen Mary obviously is you've got the most expensive set of Halloween, but, and they're all really great. You're going through those corridors, it's pretty dark and scary, but it can be easy for them to blend in your memory afterwards, and you know, you're kind of like, well, I've seen one, I've seen them all. They seem to be themed fairly carefully, submerged versus hellfire. Yeah, fire and water, easy to tell. So was that a big part of it, trying to make them so distinct that you're not just thinking, oh yeah, I'm going through another hallway up the big area? It was a big part of it, but the other part of choosing those themes came from the history of the ship as well. Um, think about ships and all the disasters that can happen on the ship. It seems it catches fire and there's nowhere to go. And then containment, which was in the infirmary. Um, Play, yeah. yeah, exactly. The, when an uh, outbreak happens on a ship, they have to contain that. So it's actually taking you through the area that, that would contain um, all of those infirmary stuff. But this year, we are approaching it in a new way to bring back those stories. So we're creating two brand new bases on the ship that are completely born and scripted out of the, sh the characters that we brought to life that are, again, based on the actual encounters on the ship. So can you tell us about some of the real-life ghost stories, I guess? Well, Absolutely. How, what is the best stuff? I mean, I know there's the pool is supposed to be one. You know, we're considered by many to be one of the most haunted locations in the world, and there is a wide variety of experiences that professional paranormal investigators, psychics, uh, our hotel guests, our employees, and even us have experienced in one way or another. Um, I myself tend towards being very skeptical, but even, even I've seen some things that I can't quite fully explain. And I'm really quick to try to do so. Um, so it's a unique environment, and uh, obviously there's some very famous uh, cases. There is uh, a young lady that is purported to have drowned um, aboard our ship. There are no historical records of any, peer, of a, any young lady dying in our pool. However, no records were kept during the war years. We served as both a troop transport and a uh, transport for war brides and children coming over from Europe during the Second World War. Um, many of the investigators believe that the truth of that story lies in that period. Um, hundreds, thousands of our guests over the years have encountered this young lady believed to be Jackie. And that has informed the characters and stories of Dark Harbor. Indeed, there's, there's other stories that we touch on there's the famous death of a fireman in our engine room in uh, door 13, which isn't door 13 because it's a spooky Disney number to put on the door, but historically that's always what it was referred to. In fact, you can actually see the markers still on the bridge uh, on one of the control panels for all of the hydraulic water type doors. Um, that's a famous case, and indeed that, that individual um, has reportedly been seen by thousands 
of guests aboard the ship over the years, particularly um, from the period she was brought to Long Beach in 1967 when she opened the public in 1970. That's good. Um, you're doing a couple of these. Are these replacing some of the old ones? They are. Okay. Because it used to be in the old days they would do like four or five and you kind of felt they were stretching a little thin. And in the last few years, it has been three on the Was that the reason the idea we're going to do three well rather than a lot more? Yeah, we wanted to put the production value into the mazes that our guests are experiences experience. Plus, they have five hours to experience all of the mazes in, and we want to be able to get people through them so they can experience as much as possible in the short time they're allowed to be there. Because there used to be uh, one area that went by the huge propeller. Is that they built that, and we don't get to see that anymore. Like, did they just decide that wasn't scary enough? Or <laughs> what, what happened? Um, that was um, taken out. Um, but I will say this is. But there is potential that that might open back up. Okay. That's, that's nice. Potential. Okay, so let's talk about the real challenge of Queen Mary. You know, anything you do is going to be spooky there. I mean, I think they, just before you came in, they had some college kids one year because they were free. And it was still scary because the Queen Mary is freaking scary. But you have to do some stuff on land too. How is it possible to make them get them up to that level where they match the Queen Mary? The fishing village is, has a nice spooky feel. But You've got the dome, which is just a big empty space. It's kind of nothing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what, what do you is that the challenge? The big challenge? Um, it's challenging, but I gotta say the property of the Queen Mary gives us a lot to work with. That fishing village is incredible and spooky in the architecture itself. The dome, architecturally, just from the outside, is is really unique, and it has a rich history too. With the it's how it uses spruce goose dome, so. It also comes from a rich history, so the property and the Queen Mary itself, we feel, works very well together. And strangely enough, some of uh, our fan favorites happen to be off the ship, and the village has always been one of the fan favorites. So, um, like the, the corridors are very dark for the ship. Obviously, that's a great help for you. Also, maybe a hindrance, because people might miss stuff. I notice always the kind of subjective impression of people who go through the pieces is often quite different from maybe what was intended. Have you ever heard feedback from anyone and think, oh God, they missed the thing I most wanted them to see? Is there <laughs> stuff like, oh, they didn't get it because it was too dark or they were scared by this thing on the right or because something else? And any feedback, like you were surprised at the reactions? Yeah, what's, what's great about it, though, is that people can go through multiple times and have a different <laughs> experience every time. So um, when we're building these haunts, we kind of know, setting up the distractions and the scares, that some things will be missed because they're distracted and they're scared. So we're hoping to keep people so active through the event and their minds wandering a bit, they'll want to go a second or a third time because they're missing some of that detail. And when we're building these um, mazes, we put a lot of effort and um, into the production value. So hopefully they will, there will be new stuff for this experience. <clears throat> well, of course, that's not unique to the Queen Mary. I mean, at the end of the day, every haunter in here knows that no matter how hard you try to come up with a compelling storyline and amazing character, and this beautiful tableau that speaks just wonderfully to how much artistry has gone into your event, at the end of the day, their favorite thing's going to be in the dark room and the chainsaw. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's always that element. There's the things that sing to every guest. There's always that element of distraction. And in fact, that's that's intentional. That's very much part of the holistic experience of a great spooky theatrical environment. But we like to believe that the, the total impression of the Queen Mary and how it speaks in all parts is so frightening. <laughs> and even if there's a sweet Mary back there, in case you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> and it's like Guillermo was saying earlier, we can't, Steven Spielberg can't recreate, even the best production designer can't recreate some of the beautiful scenery that's aboard the ship. So the palette that we have to work with, we're very fortunate to have. So if I had a time machine, there's like a meeting I want to go back to. Maybe you were there and could describe it. You've got the Queen Mary, you've got a real ship. For the past couple of years, you've done another base called Dead Rise, which is a fake ship you built there. And I want to know. Proposed that, that idea of meeting to the brass and humor and say, well, got, let's make a fake ship. Because the real ship, you know, we, we've done all we can. <laughs> well, um, I'll let you handle it. <laughs> I know, I was like, thank you. Um, um, I was in that meeting. <laughs> um, it goes back to the historical stories that the Queen Mary has to offer. Some of them documented and some of them not. Um, when the Queen Mary was working as an escort ship, like Ryan was saying during World War II, there's a lot of stories that go along with that. One of the things that goes along with that is the uh, Dead Rise is based on an escort ship that um, the captain has conjured up from the past and brought to the Queen Mary to help. Our stories are based on when we were, Star Harbor was taken over, we wanted to bring 
the spirits of the Queen Mary from the darkest corners to take over Dark Harbor. So in doing so, the, the captain, our lead character, gathered all of the ship's um, spirits of the past, gathered them all together to bring them to the event. From that past, from that history, from the spirits of the ship, he brought up some of the escort ships from World War II. And Dead Rise is one of those escort ships. And it, it, it's, it's there are the sailors aboard Dead Rise are, are in his armada helping to fight and protect the Queen Mary and all the true spirits that on her. So it's based on the history and the captain has conquered it and it's to, to fight for the true spirits. <laughs> okay, and another question I have to ask, you know, the last few years you've been doing a good job of theming things that are appropriate for the Queen Mary. We got sea demons for a while, we got the captain from Dead Rise, and then last year we got a ringmaster. And I wonder whose idea was it? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, don't we have enough killer clowns? <laughs> well, in one way or another, everybody in the Queen Mary is joined the circus, and I can promise you that's true. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, we're really excited about the circus. Um, you're one of the new characters um, with the captain, Graceful Gale, Half Hatch Henry, Samuel Savage, Scary Mary. Those are all based on actual haunts. And like I was saying several years ago, the captain rose from the darkest corners, and with that came all of the spirits of the Queen Mary rising. So, year two of these characters returning, the captain wanted to celebrate the rise. So it was a huge party. And in that celebration, the captain conjured up the haunted circus. And the ringmaster came with that. We love her. Um, the circus is very carefully done with a very vintage feel. So you won't see Bozo anywhere in the harbor. <laughs> You're going to see some great vintage mines and clouds that come with this haunted circus to celebrate the rise of the spirits of the moon. Okay, wait. Okay.